Hello and welcome to the channel. Tonight we're going to start the adventure game from Dungeon Crusade. This is what is recommended to start with your heroes before you actually venture into a dungeon. So our last video we did the setup we have all of our cards laid out, our banners on the map. We also have all of our heroes set up. Numbered. Ready to go, I think, pretty much set. So we'll get started. I will uh, forewarn you, as uh, Roger has mentioned repeatedly, if uh, there are certainly spoilers if you watch through this, because these cards, uh, you know, that make up every, uh, well, let's see, go back to our map. Each card that we pull when we enter an area, uh, you know, it's going to have, uh, you're going to roll a 12-sided a die and choose a story, uh, whatever. So it may be an encounter, maybe a battle, maybe you, you find something or you learn something. I, I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't read any of them yet. So, But uh, those don't change. Now, the number you roll may certainly change, and, you, you know, this, this game... Uh, every time you play, it's going to be different. But uh, of course, you only basically play it once. Once you, or uh, or at least successfully, once you have found all three of the orbs that we're looking for, then uh, your your heroes can't go back and do it again. So now, if you fail, obviously you can start over and reset everything and give it another shot. I assume. I, I haven't seen anything in a rule book that would prevent that, so um, that would be my guess. But I could be wrong. Lord knows I've been wrong before. So we are going to start, and uh, we have an orb right here, so it's just two spaces away. I'm trying to look and maybe see, it looks like just making a big circle if we want to come all the way over to here and get these guys there's two of them over here um or you could take a chance and just make a small circle just and then come back i don't know uh there's going to be a lot of uh if you come all the way over to these two that's a lot of traveling you're going to have a opportunity to have a lot of things so We'll see. We'll see what we come up with. Uh, one thing uh, I did not point in the rules that Roger mentioned, that the, these orbs, you can, uh, if you find one that's not, um, you know, one of the three that we're certainly looking for, uh, if you find one of the others, they can be used in this game only, not when you get into the dungeon. They can be used to re-roll uh, a die so that's a handy information to have so okay so i think uh, our first move is going to be into the tower of saint viticus right there and uh, uh this i don't know if this views any better it's not certainly not as clear um again it's not it's not the not the best camera but it doesn't actually i went ahead and I'm, i grabbed another little camera i'm going to try it fortunately i can return it if it doesn't work for me but I'm trying to figure out just a little bit better way because the good camera that I have, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to set this up when, when this thing covers the whole 
table. Uh, it's almost, uh, I may have to do a lot like Roger did in his videos, is uh, bounce it around and, uh, you know, on its own on its own little stand somewhere. I don't know. We'll see. I don't have all those components yet, but we'll figure something out. So, again, with the warning that there are some spoilers. There will be spoilers during this uh, playthrough. So if you're wanting to go through it all fresh and new again, you won't hit the same spots. You won't roll the same numbers. It will be different, but uh, certainly, you know, you could roll, come here and roll the exact same number that I do, and then you know exactly what's going to happen. Or you roll a different number, and you have no idea what's going to happen. So we need to find the green card of the Tower of St. Viticus. And this is, we're looking through, there it is. And I'm not going to show the card because that would definitely spoil things. So we're going to roll a 12-sided die and see what we come up with. We come up with a 2. Right? It's not going to be good because I know 1 through 6s are not good. A battle. We start right off with a battle. Early one evening, the heroes reach the tower and decide on splitting up to search the perimeter. Randomly select three heroes. As these heroes approach the front, the door of the tower is kicked open by Lord Blackhand. He slowly descends the stone stairway of the tower, points to the heroes, I have been anticipating your arrival. Give each hero 1d6. Lord Blackhand has four health and a toughness of 11. Every round of combat, the heroes must roll their d6 together. If the combined result is equal to or exceeds Lord Blackhand's toughness, deal one damage. If the result is lower, Lord Blackhand deals two damage to the hero with the least health. Okay. So I'm not sure, <clears throat> I'm honestly, I, I don't know all of these standees, I, I, I really don't, I, I, I'm not sure, since I haven't read the book and gone through and looked at all the pictures, I don't know, but I'm going to say, for right now, we're going to go with this guy here. And it'd be nice if it would focus on there, but it's not. Anyway, that's the night looking guy. Okay, so we're gonna go over to our uh go over to our board here and see if we can't uh figure this out. Okay, so Lord Blackwood's gonna be right there in the middle of everything. I don't know, maybe this uh maybe this other view may be a little better. I don't know. Let's see. If we turn him that way. At least you can see him. Kind of an odd angle, but Okay, we first we're gonna randomly select three heroes. So we have the D six. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll three different D six. And we will select those three heroes. We have two, three, and four. That will be, uh, let's see, that's going to be, let's look over here. That's going to be two, three, and four. So, Sir Brennus, Faith, and in one. So let's see. We'll go with the standees so I don't get confused right now. We'll put them over here. And let's see. Go to that camera. So we have Brennus, 
and face, and then in one is here. Okay, so I need to figure out, uh, give them each a D6. I guess I don't really have to keep track of who rolls what. So I'll just roll 3D6. Um, nobody gets to use a bonus. They roll their D6 together, and then the, the, if we don't exceed 11, equal to or exceed 11, then the deals two damage to the hero with the least health. So we'll be able to figure that out. There's a tie, we'll roll for that. Okay. So, we're going to roll these three dice. We'll just stick with the same ones we got and see if we get 11. Uh, 4, 6, 8. That is not 11. So, when we look at our player cards, look at our player cards, uh, helps 9, 10, and 9. Okay, so we have two with nine. So we're going to say one to three, four to six. And that's going to be faith. So faith is going down from nine to seven. The bad thing is it's going to be attacked every time, every time there's an attack on it. Okay, so we go back. And we're going to roll three dice again. Eight, nine. Okay, this may not end well. Okay, so we'll go back. And now she's going to lose two more. Go back. Uh, 10, team of Christmas. Okay, so she loses two more. She's down to three already. She's not going to make it. I did go ahead and laminate these because I think that makes the sliders work a little better. Okay, next. down to one. And we'll start again. Fifteen, we got him that time. Okay, so he now has one marker on him. Let's see. Let's put him. He's got, what do we say, four? Four health. So he's now got one. Okay. And let's we'll see if we can get lucky here. Six, eight. Nope. Not so lucky there. So, faith is no more. We've lost one hero already. So, faith goes down. And let's see. We're going to go back. Roll again. Okay, now we've got two on him now. So let's see. Another one that has got two. Then we'll roll again. Ten. Oh, so close. Oh, can't quite see that one. But ten. 
Okay, next in our uh, our list, he's got ten. N one has nine, so she goes down to seven. And we'll roll again. Nope. With uh, eight, that's not going to do it. So Lemon goes down to five. Okay. Next up, well, we got him that time. So now he has three. And let's see if we can get one more before we kill anybody else off. Nope. That means N1 goes down to three. We'll just keep that there. Reroll. Uh, no. N1 is down to one. Come on, heroes. Nope. N1 is gone. N1 has dropped down to zero. Well, this is not going to be a good start. I can already tell. Okay, so N1 goes down. Okay, let's see if Sir Brennis can do anything. Brennis is the lone one. He's got 14. Sir Brennis defeats the bad guy. So Brennis, Sir Brennis is the only one standing. Faith and Inwin have died. Not a good start for our adventurers. Okay. Well, let's see here. Put him up. Okay, now we have the ability to bring them back. And I want to double double check the rules here real quick. Okay, and what we do is we remove these clips for right now. So they're gone. So they've lost all their health and that's it. We're going to roll a D6. I'm sorry, a D3, the white D3 that is Basically, it's a, a six-sided die, but just has one, two, and three on it. And then we roll a red D12 and an orange D12. The D3, whatever they get, that restores their health and essence to that number. And then red restores health, and orange restores essence to that number. So... Let me get the die ready here. We're going to draw the D3, a red, and an orange. Okay. And first we're going to roll for Faith. And she got a 3, 10 for health, and 7. For essence. Oops. Sorry. Anyway, there's the numbers. Um, forgot to switch over. So, let's go back. So, she gets three. It's up to three for the... 
the die three, and then she gets ten health. So she's only got nine. So uh, I did see in the rule, and also Roger mentioned they don't go above. And she got seven essence, so that's back to ten. So she's she's full strength. The angels have come and rescued her, brought her back, resurrected her body. So same thing now for Enwin. Ooh, essence not too great, but health is good. Okay, so N1 gets, oops, gotta watch out here, we're all tangled together. On the D3, she gets three, and three, and then she gets 10 health, which nine is her max, and she gets two essence. Which, fortunately, in in this game, um, essence isn't all that important. Uh, in the dungeon it does, but at least in this part. Okay, so let's go... And go back. And we have explored that one so we don't have to do that one we want to put a red token on where we've explored okay so we have successfully defeated the bad guy Although it was a little bit costly. Let me get these health tokens. So, our next move, that ends that turn. So, our next one goes to here, which is Evergreen. And that is in the green one also. And it is right on the top. So we're going to roll a d12, and see what things happen this time. Five, Dad, damn it, I need to get high numbers, not these low numbers. Uh, well, okay, that's a little bonus. Five is actually on the back page, so. Visiting the temple, the heroes meet a young and very kind sage named Matthias. He explains that from a recent raid on the village, his mortar and pestle was stolen. If a hero has the mortar and pestle token, Matthias rewards them with 400 gold. We don't have that. Not even sure where we might have gotten that. So, That is another territory that we have explored. I'm going to put that card up there to the explored. And we gather this little guy. And what is it? It is one of the ones we need. It is indeed. That's the blue one. Okay, so we put that in our little bank. And that ends that turn. So let's see. The next one we want to go to is here. So it's going to take one, two, three to go that way. One, two, three. It's going to take three either way. So do we want to go the Dungeon of Zul or the House of Demons? And neither one sound all that exciting. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, we can't go, that's impassable, so it's one, two, three, so we're, we're going to have to go through the House of Demons either way, so we'll just go there first, because we can't, we can't go through there, because it doesn't, it doesn't share a, a solid line, or a dashed line, though. Okay, so House of Demons, in the green, what do we got? There he is. House of Demons. Okay, we're going to go 
and roll this die again. Eight, that may be a little better for us. <clears throat> okay, as the, <clears throat> excuse me, as the heroes are making their way down a flight of stone stairs out of the back of the structure, they view a mangled and dead fire ant laying on its back, clutching 1d3 times 100 gold. Randomly select a hero. This hero quickly pries it from the creature's claw. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and roll two dice. 2d6. The white one will be to determine which hero does it, and the red one will be to determine, oh, no, I'm sorry, it's 1d3. I gotta, I gotta read these correctly, 1d3. So I'm just rolling a d6 and the d3. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so number four picks up 200 gold. Number four is in when she's feeling much more alive now. She's happier about all that. So Enwin gets 200 gold. And there's one and there's two. Okay. That that ends that territory, so we put another one on there. <clears throat> okay. Our next one's going to be to Witherbrook Forest. Well, that's where we're going first. Witherbrook Forest. Witherbrook. Oh, there's a Witherbrook and a Witherbrook Forest, so I'm going to make sure I get the right one here. Wait a second. Oh, i got to really be careful. This is Witherbrook Forest East. Pay attention, money. Could be important. Okay, now we got it. Let's put a house of demons in our explored. Okay, now let's go and roll. Another one, and this is going to be the D10, and let's see where we're at, eight, eight on Witherbrook Forest East, traversing deep within the forest. Early one evening, one of the heroes spots an apple tree with a few fresh, juicy apples. Each hero consumes an apple and recovers two health and two essence. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. So, we have explored this area. The only one that doesn't have full health and or essence is in one so she goes from five to seven her max is nine so in one is just feeling all kinds of good now angel resurrected her she found gold and she found apples so, we're going to put that one in the explored space. Next, we will go here. We'll go see what we find here. That That is Ryan's, or Ryan, R-Y-E-N, crossing. That is in a different color. So, that's the brownish color. Ryan's crossing. Okay, let's go see what this area has to give us. Twelve. Well, hopefully those high numbers are good. 
12. Randomly select a hero. As the heroes are traversing Ryan's Crossing late one sunny morning, the selected hero is gazing into Twilight Lake, enjoying the tranquility of the water. Twilight Lake is right here, which is impassable, but must have good looking water. Test Wisdom. 12. In a clear part of the lake, about 10 feet down, is a sunken wooden chest. On a success, the hero spots it, pulls it from the lake, and opens it. Draw one loot card from the gold treasure chest deck. On a fail, the hero breaks their gaze from the lake and looks ahead. Okay, so we randomly select a hero. And then we test wisdom. And I have to look at which one of these is wisdom. That is this one. Is that it? Really? Let me make sure. Uh, number 10, this is the hero's, oh, that's the wisdom bonus. Okay. I don't know what their wisdom is. Oh, that's a, uh, no, I'm getting confused. I roll, I just roll the d12 and then I can add the bonus if they have that. Okay, let me make sure I've got this right. Test wisdom 12. Oh, well, that's right. On a test, we roll a d20. Okay, so I'm going to roll a d6 to select the character, and I'm going to roll the d20 to test wisdom. And then, depending on the characters, they may have a bonus, like uh, Faith has a bonus of 2, Brennus has a 2, Zeke has a 3, the other everybody else got zero. Okay. So D6 for a random character, D20 for 12, and whoever gets it passes it. That's an 18. Uh, three. Three gets it. That is Faith. Who had the who had the bonus uh, had a bonus anyway. They had like twelve. So Faith. Gets to draw a loot card from the gold. That's the that's the good that's the good stack. That's the big fancy important stack. That's like this stack. So she gets that top card, whatever that is. And I'm gonna get I'm just gonna put that underneath there, huh? sticking out there, so I'll know it's there. Um, I'm going back down here, just stuck the card underneath face card, so I know who who's the one that found it. Okay, so that gets us back to... Oh, you know something I forgot to do? Let's do this while I'm thinking of it. Two things. One, I'll put that in the explored column. Uh, I had two characters die, so I'm up to two on that. Two more, and it's over with. Okay. So, we have a... Oh, we have another one. No, wait a second. I may be wrong. No, I am wrong. That's not one of the ones we're looking for. Sorry. We have two of them. These are the ones, the blue ones, are the ones that I could re I can re-roll a, a die later if I want to. Because obviously the other ones are all different colors, and I can't remember what colors they are, but these are the same, so that's obviously not the ones we're looking for. And as I said in Star Wars, these are not the droids you're looking for. Okay. That's a whole different genre, isn't it? Next, we are here. 
So we want to put in, we've explored that area. Okay. Our next one's over here. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go this way and then over here. Okay, so we go to the Tower of the Maidens. <laughs> okay. I'm chuckling because I'm immediately thinking of Monty Python. So I'm not sure if that's what Roger was intending, but that's immediately what I'm thinking. So Tower of the Maidens, that's uh, it's in the green ones. Let's find out what we have there. And we're going to go and roll it 12 sided. see what happens. That's an eight. So on an eight in the Tower of Maidens, after helping the Maidens fend off an assault from some troublesome orc sage breakers one morning, Amanda Jandar calls for their apothecary to heal the heroes of their wounds and restore some of their essence. Row 1d3, the result is health and essence restored to all heroes. Okay, good things happen when you roll bigger numbers. So, let's put that card in the explored. And we're going to roll our d3. And the only one that needs anything is in one. So, let's see what she gets. She gets three, and she's all she's just too shy of her max, so she's all maxed back out. Anyone is feeling quite spunky after her visit with the maidens. Okay, so we've explored there. Next, we're going to Witherbrook Forest West, and let's see Witherbrook. Uh, what do I do with it? Oh, there it is. It's hiding. Okay, Witherbrook Force West. We're going to roll the D12. Oh, another 12. We're doing good. We're doing good. I have to remember that blue die. A 12. In the Witherbrook Forest West, the heroes find themselves within a dark and foggy area of the forest. Randomly select a hero. This hero is passing by a pile of twisty branches and leaves with a chest buried beneath it. Test willpower 10. On a success, the hero sees the chest and digs it out. Roll 1d6 times 100 for gold within the chest. On a fail, the hero glances around at the surroundings and keeps moving. Okay, so, randomly select a hero, that's a D6, and then we're going to have a D20 to test willpower, and anything 10 or better, we find it, so D6, D20, and that is 1 and 19, so we're automatically going to pass it, and that is going to be Melhiliac. He will. I should have just rolled. He goes a 1d6 times 100. So let's just roll that again. Could just roll it before. Five. He finds 500 gold. Bill Hiliak is raking in the monies. Okay. Bill Hiliak has 500 gold. Uh, that's going to put us back on the map. And we have been there. Let's put that up there. Next, let's see, we can go to Sleeping Ogre or the Tomb of Balin. Uh, not sure. Not sure. Ogres might be kind of hard to fight. Dead people are too. Let's try that. We're going to go to the tomb of Balin. 
That is in the brown section. Tomb of Balaam. Temple rooms, 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 rooms. Tomb of Balaam. There we go. There's a lot of these brown ones. Okay, we're going to roll a 12 sided die. Eight. That's another good number. I hope. Eight. Randomly select a hero. Holding a torchlight in front of them, this hero ventures into a very dark western chamber of the tomb. Following a tattered and dirty red carpet in the floor, it leads to a small altar with an ancient dead king sitting on the throne. Test Wisdom 9. On a success, the hero approaches the king and searches the area. Behind the throne is an elegant, ornate chest. Draw one loot card from the bronze treasure chest deck. On a fail, the hero finds this unsettling and exits the chamber. Okay, so randomly select a hero. So that's a D6. Test Wisdom, that's a D20. And then we're going to draw a card if we pass it. And we have to have nine or better. So a D6, a D20. And oh, we're going to have to have some help. Whoever gets it. One. That is Melhiliac. And let's see. Well, Hiliac, and we're what? We gotta look back and see. What do we say? Uh, wisdom. Wisdom is there. Wisdom is zero. He gets no bonus. He rolled a seven. So he finds this unsettling and says, no, nope. nothing here for me. I'm out of here. So that goes in the stack. That we have done there. Next we go to the House of Faith. Surely we can have some luck there. And we do have <clears throat> another rune. Uh, yeah, I could have used that. Uh, could have used that one of those other blue runes and maybe changed that roll. Get that chest. But I didn't. Okay, House of Faith in the brown one. <clears throat> okay, we're going to roll the D12. And see what happens. That's a seven. Seven in the House of Faith. Entering into a subterranean level of the houses, the heroes find a stone. Fetid circular room with straw, bones, and blood scattered throughout the vile chamber. They realize this is a breeding ground for a beast of the faith. Okay, knowledge. That's it. That's all that happens there. So, we have... Explored that one, and let's see what we have here. Okay, that's a different color, so that's a good one. So we have one of three that we need. Okay, looks like our. I think we're pretty much going to have to go over here, one way or another. We can't go there. Uh, can't go there, so it's pretty much going to have to be the Crypt of Sorrow. Crypt of Sorrow is another. <clears throat> Brownish one, Crypt of Sorrow. Okay, let's go back first and roll our D12. Two, this was probably not going to be good. Randomly select three heroes. As these heroes open the stone doors of the crypt, a stench of rotting flesh is released. 
They descend a small round stairway into the torch-lit foyer. A short distance away, the heroes discover three dead adventurers laying on the floor with gray, withered skin, their mouths open, their eyes opened wide. As each hero kneels down to search an adventure, the arms quickly reanimate and begin to choke them. Each hero must test strength, 13. On a success, the hero quickly pulls the hands away from their neck, stands up, and crushes the adventurer's head with a mighty stomp. On a fail, the hero loses one health and one essence. This test must be repeated until each hero has a success. Okay, so first, we're going to have randomly select three heroes, so I'm going to need 3d6. Um, then once we find that out, we're going to test strength 13. So I'm going to just roll those probably one at a time. Let's find out which heroes we're going to use. We're going to use 1, 5, and 6. That is Melchiliac. Melchiliac. Pollum. I can't tell if that's a Pollum or Follum. Is that an F? P? I don't know. Ganymere, anyway. And Zeke. So, two, five, I'm sorry, one. Melhiliac, one, five, and six. So, just one, five, and six. I'm just going to kind of put them out on the board there so I know, know who I'm dealing with. Okay, so they're out here. Well, at least that way you can see them that way. So that's who we have. Okay. Uh, each one's going to have to test strength of 13. Well, success, the hero pulls the hands away. Okay, strength of 13. Okay, so we're going to roll a d20. So first we're going to roll for Mel Hilliard. <clears throat> and he has a strength bonus of three. He passes, so he's good. So I'm just going to go ahead and take him out, put him back by his card. Next is Pollum Ganymere. She has a strength bonus of one. She is successful also. And lastly is Zeke, who has a streak bonus of zero. Ooh, Zeke does it too. So everybody gets out of there safely. And they go back to their spots. Unfortunately, we did not find anything. useful but nobody loses health nobody loses essence so okay so that goes back we have explored this area now what do we think here well you come down come down here you're going to be retracing your steps ah uh, that's tough that's going to be tough. You come here. You could come this way and not retrace this. So if you go to Blackwood and here, you can go to there, but you're going to be retracing into Asherah's Tower one way or the other. Or you come, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five to get there. Or one, two, three, four, five. So, same amount of movements to get back to this space on your way up. So I think we're just going to go this way. Explore a little more area. Tomb of the Undead. 
That is in the brown one. Tomb of the Undead. Of course, it's the last card I'm looking for. Okay, so we're going to go roll the D12. And we get a 12. That may be good, especially in a two mode dead. That's always probably a bonus. 12 on the Tomb of the Undead. As the heroes are searching the graveyard south of the entrance of the tomb, they discover a heavy wooden chest within a shallow grave. Select one hero and test lock picking. 14. Modify the result with the hero's lock pick value. The hero has three attempts to pick the lock. On a success, the chest contains 1d4 times 100 gold and a piece of loot. Draw one loot from the gold treasure chest. If the third attempt is a fail, the lock mechanism breaks. Okay. First, select one hero. So I get to select. I don't have to randomly select. Who has the best lock picking? And which one is lock picking? That's okay. Let's look here. Lock picking is this one, the green one. So we got, uh, well, well Hiliac's not very good at all. It looks like, looks like that's going to be Pollum. And if I'm pronouncing this wrong, well, let me know. I just, I can't really, it looks like a P to me, but I'm just not sure. So she has a uh, lockpick skill of two. So I think that's who I'm going to select. To do that, she has three chances to test lock picking 14. So that means she would need a 12 or better on one of three chances. So let's do that first. That's a D20. And what do you say? 14, so she needs a 12. That's a 2. That's not going to do it. That's a five. That's not going to do it. That's an eight. Not going to make it. Okay. So, the lock breaks. We walk away empty handed. We have been there, though. Next, we're going to go down here to Mist Vale. Oops. Let me uh, get that on the camera there so you can see where we're at. We move down here to Mist Vale. That's our next destination. Mist Vale is in the red card group. Mist Veil. There we go. Okay, we're going to go roll that D12. Let's see which one of these comes up. Four. That's probably not going to be the best number for us. Four. <clears throat> Battle. As the heroes enter Mist Veil, they are surprised to see the village being raided. Orin Brekus, the village elder, yells to them, If you are agents of Kaladar, damn you. If you are not, we could use your assistance. Randomly select three heroes. As the other three heroes help Orin, the selected heroes must combat three overgrown black rock vipers. Each hero must combat one of them. A viper has two health, a toughness of four. Give each hero 1d6. Each round of combat, a hero rolls 1d6. If the result is equal to or exceeds a viper's toughness, deal 1 damage. The resulter, if the result is lower, the hero takes 1 damage and loses 
one essence. Okay, they have a toughness of four, we're rolling a d6. Okay, so first we're going to roll 3d6 to find out which heroes go. And three overgrown black, ro black rock vipers. I have no idea what those guys look like. I'm not just not sure which one of these does which, to be honest. I do not know uh, I do not know my baddies as far as which one of these standees represents. What did it say? It was Black Rock Vipers. That sounds like a snake. So I know we got some snakes over here. Let's try that. Okay, so we're going to go over here. So I've got three snakes. Let's put them there. And so we have a green, red, and blue. That way I can roll those particular D6 and that will tell me who does what. First, we're going to roll three D6 to find out which of our three heroes are going to be in on this mess. That is going to be three, four, and five. So that is Face, Inwin, and Pollum. So we'll put, I'll just go, we'll put Face there on the green one. And Inwin will be on the red one. And Pollum will be on the blue one. Okay? So this is how we're lined up for the battle. So I'm going to roll a green, red, and blue. Green, red, and blue D6. And let's see, they don't get... Uh, They have two health, the toughness of four. I uh, can't use any bonuses. Okay. So, our first rolls are one, four, and five. So, the toughness of four, so we, the blue and the red did a damage. See, I can figure this out. The blue and the red damage the Viper. And Faith is going to lose one health, right? One health and one, one damage and one essence. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. I mean, you can't quite get there. Let's see. So she goes to eight and nine. Okay, that's faith. And they have what? Two? Two health? Okay, so these two uh, already lost one health. Okay. Takes care of that. Back to rolling the dice. We have a three, a one, a three, a five, and a two. So only the red one did damage this time. So let's get another damage on the red one at least. Oh, let's see, they just have two, don't they? Okay, so that one's gone. The red one's gone. And she's done. Faith. And so, let's see, we're going to have to change. We're going to have to drop in one down one. And one, and we're going to drop 
her also. Okay. The camera's all the way across the the table from me. I'm not quite that long armed. Okay, here we go again. Oh, I didn't have to roll the red one. Take that out. Two to four. So the green one this time is successful. The blue one is not. So let's put one there. And then Pollum's going to have to drop down. Oh, did I do that wrong? I did do that wrong. Sorry. I'm going to fix it while I'm sitting here. But, uh, no, she's still out there. Okay, I got it right. Never mind. I thought I was wrong, but I was wrong. Okay, so let's go back. Both need to do one more damage and we'll kill these guys. And they did five and a six. Okay. So that ends that battle. The vipers are no more. And our heroes are successful. A little worse for the wear, but they're there. Oh, okay. okay, let's see. We need to mark. Mark that as explored. Put the Missville card up there in the stack. And we're going to go here to the Black Nether Dungeon. Black Nether Dungeon. Okay. And we see. We're going to be rolling the D12. Let's see which one we mess with. Eight. On the D12 Black Nether Dungeon 8. Randomly select a hero. Reaching the bottom of the stone stairway, this hero notices a small alcove to the southwest containing a decomposing adventure with chunks of flesh ripped from his body. Examining the adventure, this hero finds 1D4 times 100 gold. Okay. So, let's randomly select an adventure and roll... A D6 and a D4. You won't be able to see the D4, I don't think, in this camera. You might be able to. That's a 2 and a 5. Oh, it does show up pretty good, doesn't, doesn't it? Cool. Okay, so who we have, number 5, is Hollum. Hollum. I don't know. I'm going to have to find out how to pronounce her name. Uh, so she gets 200 gold. All right. Two hundred gold, that ends that one. And we place an explorer on the Black Nether Dungeon. Put that card in the explorer stack. Okay, we're going to go to the Tomb of Kaladar. That's our next spot. Tomb of Kaladar. Another red one. Tomb of Kaladar. Then we are going to roll. 
the D12. That's a three. That's usually not good numbers. We've already found that out, haven't we? Three, battle. Randomly select three heroes as these heroes traverse a dimly lit secret path within the tomb. They emerge into a quite unsettling chamber. Spanning the chamber is a pit filled, filled with baby black rock vipers. Again, really? And three overgrown black rock vipers guarding the pit. As the vipers catch sight of the heroes, they slither towards them. Give each hero 1d6. Each hero, each hero must combat a viper. A viper has two health, toughness of four. Each round of combat, a hero rolls 1d6. The result equal or exceeds the viper's toughness, deal one damage. The result is lower. Hero loses one health and one essence. So basically, like our last battle. Okay, so let's put uh, let's put the bad guys up there first. We're gonna have the same same ones. We got a green and a red and a blue. We're going to roll first three die six to find out who gets to join in on the fun here. That is one, four, and well, obviously can't have four twice. So one, three, and four. And that will be Melhiliac, Faith, and Enwin. So let's put. Well, Hilliac here, and then Faith will put there, and then Enwin will put there. So that's our battle for this go around. So I am again going to roll a green, red, and blue die and see what happens. We need a four. Or better, and they have two health. Okay. First up, uh, we have two of them. Blue is was not successful. That is in one. So in one is going to lose one health, one essence. And the bad guys red and green one red and green I have a health net. Okay. Next roll it again. The one, three, and a five. Only the green was successful this time. So that means, which makes sense, that means Mel Hilliac has defeated his. And that means so Mel Hilliac has defeated his. So he's, he's done. He's back. And then these two are going to suffer. So she goes down six and seven she goes down to six and six okay okay so that one's dead and the other two are still there so we don't need the green die anymore. We need the other two. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, so down to five and six and five and five.
Okay. Roll again. Oh, they both got a hit. And let's see. Nope. That means the... Uh, Faith has killed hers. And anyone has put... Well, we'll just move that one. Move that damage over there. These two are done. And now we're just going to have to roll the blue. Nope. So N1 is down to four and four. Roll again. Yes. And one defeats the last viper. Be nice to get a reward for that, wouldn't it? Stingy villagers are not going to help us. All righty. Well, that's kind of where we are now. Let's put that back there. And let's put an explore token. And we have one of these. That's a red one. That's two of the three. Okay. So we're going to go here. This is Asherah's Tower. And we're going to... Roll our blue D12. That's a six. See the little dot there underneath it. Okay, so a six on a sheriff's tower. The heroes take some time and rest one evening under a huge tree while peering at a beautiful garden of flowers located to the west of the tower. That was quite uneventful, but I think they probably need the rest. So, and let's see, what do we got? No, we got another blue one. Gonna have to keep going. Okay, we're, we're about this, oh, we get to, we do get to do that. Let me explore there. So I've got four more. I found five. I've got five tiles, but I have two of the ones I'm looking for. Got four more to venture out there on. We're a little over an hour already, so I think I'm going to pause here and then finish up in part two, hopefully, if my guys can survive. And... Uh, only question I've got, there was something about, uh, what was the, uh, the rejuvenating potion. I don't know if we're supposed to find those. Uh, the, the game says start with six of them, and I, and, I, and I do have them. And the rules explain that basically, you know, you regain three health and three essence when you consume it. And you can even consume it during battle. The rules... Part of the rule indicated that, uh, at least the way I read it, is that you find them or you, you, know, you may, as you're venturing around or in your whatever. You, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they can do that. Um, I have to find that out. Maybe I can find that out before we do the next episode because uh, anyone especially could, could use it. She, she needs, and, and Faith probably could use it also. Because if I lose two more adventures, you know, two more of these heroes, it's over with. We're done. All the stuff we've gathered is for naught. So, anyway, we are going to stop here for this session. And please join me for part two, probably tomorrow. Thanks, folks. Have a great time. I hope you all are enjoying the videos. If you are, you know, let me know. Give me a, give me a thumbs up or say howdy or whatever. Uh, at least let me know. I'm just... Basically not sitting here talking to myself, which I basically am, other than my dog. My dog can hear me. 
he doesn't really care about this board game. Anyway, folks, I enjoy it. I'm having fun. This is a, a, a great game. And uh, uh, like I say, I, Dungeon Crawling is not, you know, my, my go-to, my first go-to game, but I've been waiting for this one, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's fun stuff. So anyway, I'm going to let you get. We will talk to you next time. Thanks.